In this video I'm going to install SQL Server 2012 on a Windows 8 machine. Now these steps are very similar to those that would be done on a Windows 7 machine. When you launch the setup it comes to this screen. It starts off with planning. There you can get your hardware and software requirements, security documentation, etc. I'm going to go to the installation. Now this is going to be a new SQL Server standalone installation. So I'll click on that. Now here it is going through a rule check and make sure we pass all of the basic requirements to install this. And you see I have passed all eight rules there. I will click OK. I will accept the license terms. Here it's installing all my setup files to prepare for installation. Okay, once the setup support files have all installed, it goes through and does some more rule checks. You can see we passed all of our rules except for the Windows firewall. It gives us a warning. It says it is enabled. Some ports may need to be open to enable remote access. I'm not going to worry about that right now because I'm not setting it up for remote access. I will click Next. This one here asks how I want to install, whether I want to do a feature installation, uh, Power Pivot for SharePoint or all features with defaults. I am going to use the default for the SQL Server feature installation. That gets my database engine services, analysis services, reporting services, integrated services, and a few other features. Click Next. Now I get to select the various features I want to install with this. I'm going to go ahead and select the database engine services, SQL Server replication, full text and semantic extractions, data quality services, analysis services, and the native reporting services. I'm going to do the management tools, then I will click next. Once all my features are selected, again it does a rule check to ensure you have everything you need to install those features. So you can see I passed my rule check, so I'm going to click Next. And it's ask how I want to configure this instance. We can give it our own name or we can use the default. I'm going to use the default and it's going to use the default directory just keep that all there. My instance ID will be MS SQL Server. Then I will click Next. Now it's gone through and calculated how much disk space I'm going to be needing and how much is available. You see my need, my required is less than my available so I should be good. So I will click Next. Now it's going to configure the server with accounts and services. So these services will be startup type manual automatic on these three, this one manual and this one disabled. So I'm going to leave the defaults and click next. Now the server configuration for the database engine, this is how it authenticates the user. I'm going to use the Windows Authentication mode and I'm going to add current user. And in these data directories that is so you can split your data into different uh, directories and different disks. We're not going to worry about that or the file stream we're just going to do add our user under the server configuration and I will click Next.
in the configuration for the analysis services, it's also going to need my current user for managing that. So I'll click Add Current User and click Next. Reporting Services, I'm going to install and configure Reporting Services now. I'm going to leave the defaults on error reporting. And it does another rule check to make sure that I haven't selected something that is not compatible. And you see it passed all those rules. So I'll click Next. It gives me a summary of everything I'm going to be installing and I'm ready to install, so I click Install.